Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. My name is Brittany of BrittanyJJones.com. If this is your first time joining me, welcome to the channel. I hope that you will love what you see and subscribe below for more. In today's video, we are sewing, y'all. Yes! <laughs> we are going to be following along to Simplicity 8843 in today's video. If you missed my previous video, definitely go check that out because that was the preview of this pattern. In my preview videos, I like to show you all everything that I have purchased for the pattern. So I'll go over the fabric where I purchased that from. I'll go over the notions where I purchased those from. Um, all of the sewing supplies that we'll be needing as well as open up the pattern instructions so we can go over everything together to make sure there's nothing in there that'll trip us up when it's time to sew. So definitely go check that video out and then come back here and we can start sewing. So right now I have all of my fabric cut out. Here's everything right here in a nice stack and I'm ready to sew so let's get started. Okay, so step one is for us to do stay stitching around the neckline of our front and back piece. So I'm going to go ahead and get mine. Stay stitching is done at a half an inch seam allowance from the edge and stay stitching prevents curves from stretching out while you are constructing the garment. So definitely don't skip this step. So let's go ahead and do the stay stitching now and make sure that you follow the arrows that are on your diagram. Go ahead and do stay stitching on your other front and your back piece. Once we have the stay stitching down, we can go ahead and set the fronts and back pieces to the side. And if you're going to be working on view A and D, go ahead and grab your pocket piece, which is piece number two. And we'll start working on that right now. So the first thing that we're going to do for the pocket is press under a quarter of an inch at the top of the pocket. So I'm going to go ahead and grab my iron now and go ahead and press that in place. Now that we have it pressed under, on the right side, we're going to fold it along the fold line. I snipped into the size of my fold line, so we fold that down like so, and then we'll take it to the machine and we're going to stitch all the way around, starting at the top, all the way along the seam line, around the curve, all the way around the pocket. So let's go ahead and go to the machine and stitch that down now. So now that we went all the way around the pocket on the seam line, I'm going to change to my basting stitch on my machine and a quarter of an inch on the inside of the seam allowance, I'm not inside the pocket, in the seam allowance at about a quarter of an inch, I'm going to just do a basting stitch along this curve. We'll be able to pull it up to kind of gather it to make it really easier to press it flat so then we can sew it onto our jacket. Okay, so I have the pockets stitched along the stitching line and I also, you can see my basting stitch here. The first thing we're gonna do before we turn it everything right side out is to clip a little bit of this excess out of the corner. So I'm just gonna trim a little bit of that away, being sure not to clip my stitching. So you can see how much I clipped away and I'm also gonna come in just to touch on that corner. I'm gonna do the same thing to the other side, just clip into it here and just a little on that corner. Okay, once you have that trimmed away, we can go ahead and flip the pocket right side out. And since we already have that seam allowance, that's a guide for us that we can use to just go ahead and press in all of this excess. Now right here on the corner, I'm going to start pulling up my basting stitch just a little bit so I can ease in the fullness of that curve. So you can see why we did that. See, it already started to form it which is great. So I'm going to go ahead and do the other side. Just pull up on that a little bit. See it already formed it. So now I'm going to go ahead and get my iron. So now your pocket should look like this. I am going to clip out some of the fullness though so it's not too bulky. And again, I'm only standing the seam allowance. I'm not getting too crazy here. Make sure that you don't um, clip your stitching line or clip into your pocket. Just kind of get some of that fullness out so it's not so bulky right here in the corner. Okay, so this pocket is all done. I'm going to go ahead and do the other one the same way. And then I'm going to take it to the machine and I'm going to do a row of top stitching right here at the top of the pocket. 
right along this edge right here. So I'm gonna have it so that the pocket is right side up and I'm just gonna top stitch right along this edge. All right, so here are my pockets. I have them top stitched and they're ready to go. The next step is for us to take our snaps and we need to take the knob of the snap and place it right at the circle that we transferred. So I'm gonna go ahead and get Okay, so if I remember correctly, I believe this portion goes with that part and this portion goes with this part. So we're gonna take this flat part of it here and put it on to that part. This will go onto the flap. So I'm just gonna put that back and wait till we get to the flat part. Um, these are the little tools that I had in my stash that came with another pack of these that I'm going to be using. It looks like this. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to snip just a little bit right into this hole, right, this circle right here. That should be big enough. I'm going to take this portion and kind of push that through a little bit so that it looks like that, which I probably should have put some interfacing. I think I wanna put some interfacing here. I'm gonna apply a little bit of interfacing, even though I already put a hole in it, I'm still gonna apply a little bit of interfacing um, for this because my fabric is kind of thin and I think it'd be a good idea to go ahead and secure that. So I'm gonna go ahead and apply a little bit of interfacing and then I will snip it and do uh, push that through and finish this up. So let me go ahead and grab my iron now. Okay, you can see I just fused a little bit of interfacing to it. So now I'm gonna go ahead and apply my snap going to take this portion of it, stick that through the back. And now I'm going to take this top portion here and put that on top of it. And so now I'm going to take this tool, I'm going to use this portion of it right here and put it along the back. I'm going to take this part here, the, top, the pointy part of it, stick that inside of it. I have my hammer here. I'm just going to hammer it a couple times okay this isn't as tight as I want it to be so I'm gonna take it to the floor I'm trying not to hit too hard on my table so I'm gonna take it to the floor um, and hit it a couple times with a hammer just to get it secure because it's like super loose right now so I'll be right back okay so I finally got the knob part of the um, snap on go someplace where you can you know really hit it hard so it can get secure so I have those done now let's go ahead and grab our front jacket pieces and we're gonna find our, mar our markings that we transferred which is really hard for me to see mine but here they are right here I'm just gonna stick a pin through them so I can see on the other side where they are now I'm going to go ahead and place my pocket. And pin the pocket in place. Okay, now that we have this pocket pinned on, I'm gonna go ahead and pin the other pocket onto the other front, and then we'll take it to the machine and we will edge stitch the pocket all the way around in place. Now we go ahead and stitch the other pocket on the same way. All right, so I know that's hard to see, but I do have my pockets sewn on. So we're done with the front pieces for right now. So let's go ahead and grab our flaps, which is piece three. You should have cut out four of these and two interfacing pieces. So I've already fused interfacing to two of them. So now with right sides facing, we're gonna take one that's uninterfaced and one that is interfaced, right sides facing, and we're going to pin all the way around. Now we can go to the machine and we can stitch all the way around the edge. Make sure that you leave the top open because we need to flip it right side out. So just start over here, back stitch and go all the way around at a 5 8 of an inch seam allowance and then back stitch here. Again, leave this portion open.
Okay, we can go ahead and stitch the other flap the same way. Okay, so now that the flaps are sewn together, I'm gonna go ahead and grab my scissors and trim down this seam allowance. Now I'm going to take my snippers here and I'm going to clip out a little bit of the curve, um, eliminating some of that SS fabric so once we flip it right side out, all of that won't just sit and bunch in there, that excess bulk. So I'm going to clip a little bit of that out at the corners, being careful not to clip into that pocket seam. So I'm just snipping in a little, tr little triangles right here to eliminate some of that extra fabric. Just like that. Okay, now I'm gonna go ahead and flip it right side out and give everything a really good press. Once you have the pockets turned the right side out, you can go ahead and press them down. I'm going to use the rounded edge of my point turner just to get over in this corner again. Okay, so now I'm going to go to the machine. We're going to base this top opening closed and then we're going to top stitch all the way along the sides and lower edge of the flap. So here is my flap. I'm going to go ahead and do the other one the exact same way. Alright, so I have my flaps all done and ready to go. And if you're like me and you have no idea where you're <laughs> marking it, I'm going to grab my pattern piece right here and I'm going to line it up at the top. I'm going to put my markings right here on the sides because they are right here. So I'm just going to line it up right there. I'm going to take a pin and poke it through and just put a mark there so I know where it is. I'm gonna do the same thing for the other one. Okay, so now that I have my marking for my snap, I'm gonna go ahead and put that to the side. I'm gonna go ahead and grab the top portion to the snap. So it's the flat portion and this part right here that we need. So I'm going to grab two of these, grab my little snipper so I can put a hole in it. I also have the tool that I'm going to use for it and my hammer. Go ahead and apply these because I can't do it here. I will show you though um, how I'm going to do it. So I'm just going to, I guess we could fold it in half. That works too. I'm just going to put my little snip here, a little snip there. And I gotta go make sure it goes to the other side. Okay, so this is the right side of my flap. So I'm gonna put my snap there, push it through. There we go. Push that through. I'm gonna take that portion and like that. So here is the snap on the right side, and here it is um, on the inside. So now I can take this flat portion of it. Take this sharp part there, put it on the inside, and then get the hammer and hammer it down. So I'm gonna go do that now. Okay, so I have the snaps on, the flap portion. Okay, now it's time for us to put our flap on, and I zoomed in a little bit because I know with my print, it's gonna be kinda hard to see. So first thing first, we need to find our flap markings. So I'm gonna turn to the back here, grab some pins. These right here, these are my markings for my flap, so I'm just gonna push my pins through there. Okay, so here are the pins, and these indicate my small dots. So I'm gonna take my flap with my small dots, which are right here on the side, and line it up. So it should be lining up with your basting stitch. Here's my basting stitch right here, and there's the small dot. So I'm gonna go ahead and pin it there. Okay, so before we start stitching, we want to just fold over to make sure that we can snap it down in place and mine is meeting up perfect. 
So now we can go ahead and stitch along this basting line, the, the basting line that we basted the flap close at the top. We're going to stitch right along that line, so I'm going to go ahead and do that now. Okay, now that I have the flap stitched on, I'm going to go ahead and trim down some of this seam allowance from the flap. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and turn the flap down and give it a good press. Once we have it pressed, we're going to top stitch right along the top of the flap. So let's go ahead and press this down now and then do our top stitching. Okay, we're going to top stitch a quarter of an inch away from the top of the flap. So go down a quarter of an inch and let's go ahead and top stitch across the top of it. Okay, now do the other pocket flap the same exact way. All right, so now my pockets are finished. I know it's hard to see. I do apologize, y'all, um, but I have my flaps. They are snapped down here to the pocket. We are all done with the pockets for the front for view A and view D. Now, if you are going with pockets B and C, go ahead and start at uh, step eight and work through step 13, and then we will pick back up on step 14 with stitching the front and back together at the shoulder seams. All right, so here are my two fronts and here are my back piece. You see I have them right sides together. So I'm gonna go ahead and find my notches and line those up, pin everything in place. Once I have it pinned, I'm gonna go ahead and take it to the sewing machine and we're gonna stitch it at a 5 8 of an inch seam allowance. Okay, I have my shoulder seams sewn. I'm gonna go ahead and press these flat. Because this anorak is unlined, um, I don't want to serge my seams. Now that's just my option. You obviously can serge yours, you can pink and shear yours, you can do whatever you want to yours, but I think I want to use this bias tape trim right here that I have. Um, and I'm just basically gonna just encase the edges of the seam, the seam allowance. So I'm just gonna slide the edge of the seam allowance in there and I'm just gonna stitch right down the edge of that. So I'm gonna trim this down to 3 8 of an inch seam allowance and then I'm just going to encase it with this bias tape and I'm gonna do that for all of my seams for this jacket. So again, this is double fold bias tape and I did trim this down to, um, trimmed off about a quarter, quarter of an inch of it. So I'm just gonna encase it into this. It's not a home cone finish, I'm just, um, putting bias tape on the seam. That's literally all I'm doing. <laughs> so this is what the seam looks like one side of it. I'm gonna go ahead and do the other side now. I'll show you what it looks like when it's all done. Okay, so I have the bias tape on my seam allowance. Again, I did trim this down, my seam allowance down to 3 8 of an inch, and then I just put my seam allowance between the bias tape and sewed it down. Like I said, this is totally uh, optional. You can use your serger, you can use pick and shears, you can use a zigzag stitch, whatever you have to finish off your seams. Just finish off your seams however you want to. So now I'm gonna put this to the side and start working on our hood if you are going to be doing view A and B. If you're doing view C or D, you can start working on your collar, but I'm gonna be following along with the hood. All right, for our hoods, we should have cut out four pieces. So, I'm gonna start with these two right here. So on the outside of the fabric, you should have transferred your pleats and I notched mine. So for the solid line pleat, we're gonna fold that and we're gonna bring it over to the dotted pleat. So it will look like this. Go ahead and pin that in place. And then we're gonna do this other one the same way. So the solid line to the dotted line. Pin that in place. 
and now we can take it to the sewing machine and baste it across the bottom to hold that pleat in place. Go ahead and do this to the other three hood pieces. Okay, so I have all of the pleats done on the hood. I'm going to go ahead and sit these to the side. We'll work with these in just a moment. One is going to be for the hood and the other is going to be for the facing. So I'm just going to start working on these and we're going to grab piece 10, which is the center of the hood. One of these will go for the facing, so I put that on that side. And for now, we're gonna go ahead and start matching up our notches. So you should have transferred notches at the double notches. So I'm gonna start here and line those up and pin in place. Take the other hood, match up the center, then, I'm sorry, match up the notches, and pin the same way we did the other side. Okay, so I have everything pinned. I'm gonna go ahead to the machine, stitch it at a 5 8 of an inch seam allowance, both of these sides here, and then we're gonna do the same exact thing for the other, uh, the facing for the hood. So let's go ahead and do this one now. Okay, so I have both of the hoods sewn. This one will be for the facing and this one will be for um, the right side of the garment. So I'm gonna go ahead and clip into, clip into the curves. Okay, I clipped into the curves. I have my ironing board right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and press those seams flat. For pressing, I'm gonna use my ham right here. I purchased this from my local Joann's. You can also find it online online at Amazon. But anytime you are pressing something with the curve, you want to use your ham so that you're not flattening out the curve. This ham will make sure that it keeps its shape. And I'll open up the seams and just press everything nice and flat. Also, I get a lot of questions about my iron. Y'all, I picked this up from Walmart. This is a Hamilton Beach iron. Um, I'm really surprised at the steam of it too. I think it does really well. So I'm just going to open up these seams and then continue pressing all the way around the hood. Okay, so go ahead and press open your other seam the same way and then uh, also press open the other hood. Those seams the same way, then we'll move on to the next step. Okay, so I have both of the hoods pressed. I'm going to go ahead and put one to the side. That would be for the facing. So I have my front and back right here. I'm going to go ahead and pin my hood to it right sides facing. First, I'm going to start in the back and line up my notches. Pin there. And then I'm just going to start pinning all the way around. If you get to a point where it's a little bit more fabric in the hood than it is on the front or the back, you can just snip right into the, the seam allowance right up to the stay stitch and you don't want to go past the stay stitching so i'm just clipping right up to the stay stitching just so it can give a little bit i'm gonna put one more over here okay so now it's giving a little bit for me so i can pin in place pin a little bit more Okay, now I'm gonna take it to the sewing machine. I'm gonna stitch it at a 5 8 of an inch seam allowance. So 
so I have the hood sewn on. Now I'm gonna go ahead and trim down the seam and then press it going up toward the hood. All right, I have the seam trimmed and pressed up, so let's move on to the next step. Okay, so the next step is for us to go ahead and install our zipper. This is my 30 inch zipper that I purchased. Um, and I honestly, I just came back from the store, y'all, from getting another zipper because, and I'm gonna show you right quick. So for the hood, you want to, you want the zipper to come down just seven eighths of an inch from the top of this. And you want it to also, the bottom of the zipper to stop right at the hemline. So if I take my 30 inch zipper, and if I put it down here at the hemline, here's the hemline, I have a, a dot right here. I'm gonna put a pin there just to hold that in place. And if I come all the way up here, I'm gonna pin, put another pin here just to hold it in place. And all the way up, now the zipper at the top of it is supposed to stop seven eighths of an inch from the top of the hood because we gotta sew around here to attach the facing and everything. So you don't want the zipper to be up here. You can see here that the zipper is a little bit too long. Now you can shorten your zipper. You can always shorten a zipper, especially if you have like a metal zipper or if you're doing another garment like a skirt or something, you can always just cut off, you know, the top of the zipper. I don't wanna do that. So I just went back and I purchased a shorter zipper. I purchased two. So hopefully one of these two will be perfect for what I need. So here are the two zippers that I went back and purchased. One is a 26 inch and the other is a 28 inch. So I'm going to try the 28 inch zipper length first and see how that works. So I'm going to make sure that I have my zipper stop at the bottom lined up with the hem line. I'm going to put a pin here. And again, this is a 28 inch separating zipper. I'm just pinning it down. Make sure that your zipper stop is facing down. So my zipper stop is about a full inch down, not seven eighth of an inch down. So I just wanted to let you all know that. So this is my zipper. I have this side pin. I'm gonna go ahead and baste this side in place now. The next step is for us to stitch this down using a regular stitch. We just basted it, so now it's time for us to stitch it down. But before I do that, I just want to zip up my jacket to make sure that they are aligned and that everything is even. So I'm just going to hook the zipper back up. So you can see here that my hem is not even. So I'm going to adjust this side of the zipper and bring it down just a little bit so that it matches up with this side. All right, so I just took out this side um, of my zipper that I based it on because it wasn't matching up at the lower edge and I completely forgot I should have kept this zipped up and then matched up this seam up here, the, the neckline seam, so that I know exactly where I need that to line up at. So I'm just going to line that up. I'm gonna put a mark on my zipper tape so I will know where I need to match that up at. I'm also gonna put that along the back of the zipper so I'll be able to see it when I'm sewing it in place. I'm doing, and I'm gonna do the same thing for down here at the bottom. And then I'm gonna put a mark right here on my front piece where that needs to line up at. So that way I can have some, just some guidelines on where I need my things to intersect at. That will help the zipper to go in evenly on both sides. So now I'm going to unzip this side, pin it back on here, making sure that the zipper teeth is facing toward um, the right side of the jacket and that the tape is lined up with the raw edge. Now I can go ahead and pin everything down and in place and it will be even this time when I'm all done. So that's what I'm gonna go ahead and do now, pin this in place and baste it down and we'll see what it looks like then. Okay, so I just basted it this side on and you can see that after I made the marks, my seams are lining up and even the, whoa, well, <laughs> even the bottom hem is lining up now. One isn't longer than the other. So sometimes making those little marks on your zipper can make all the difference with how everything lines up. 
So now that we have everything basted, now we can unzip. Take it to the machine and now we can do our permanent stitch. So go ahead and stitch both of the zipper tapes down now. Okay y'all, so I had to take my zipper out once again because I lined my zipper tape up right with the edge, the front edge, and I should have went in a quarter of an inch away from this front edge. So let's go ahead and do it all over again. <laughs> so I'm gonna take this part of my zipper tape, making sure the zipper stop is facing down. I'm gonna make sure that I line it up down here with the bottom hemline, and I'm gonna go in a quarter of an inch away from that front edge and I'm gonna pin it down. If you're wondering why do I need to go in a quarter of an inch, because when it's time to sew the zipper tape in place, we're gonna sew it at a 5 8 of an inch. If you don't come in a quarter of an inch, then you won't be able to sew it at a 5 8 of an inch because the zipper teeth will be lined up with the 5 8 of an inch mark. So you need to come in a quarter of an inch so you will be able to stitch it at a 5 8 of an inch seam allowance. So um, I'm doing it all over again. <laughs> So I'm gonna go ahead and just pin the zipper in place. Make sure I have everything lined up like before. So I'm gonna go ahead and baste this down. I'm gonna baste the other side the same exact way. And then I'm gonna go ahead and stitch it all down and make sure that you go over a quarter of an inch from this front edge. Okay, so here's my finished zipper. I have it sewn in with my regular sewing machine stitch. You want to make sure that your seam up here around your neckline lines up. And you also want to make sure that your hem is even at the bottom. That looks like it's not, but that's actually fabric there. <laughs> make sure that that is lined up at the bottom as well. And you also want to make sure that, again, you went in a quarter of an inch from the front edge because we now have to go back and sew the facing on. So you want to make sure that you have that extra fabric so you can stitch at a 5 8 of an inch seam allowance. So once we have that done, we can go ahead and move on to the next step. Okay, now that we have the zipper installed, the next step is for us to start working on our front facing, which is piece four. You should have cut out two of those in fabric and two of those of interfacing. I've already fused mine with interfacing. And what we're gonna do is press under 3 8 of an inch on the non-zipper edge. Now they don't have any markings to indicate that, so it's on your pattern piece. It says zipper edge. So we're gonna line that up. And at the top of one end of the facing, there's like a little curve and a square off. That is the portion that we're going to press under 3 8 of an inch on. So go ahead and find that and press under your 3 8 of an inch on that portion of your front facing. So go ahead and fold that under and then press it down. Okay, now that we have the 3 8 of an inch pressed up on our front facings, we want to go ahead and grab our hood facing and with the right sides together, we're going to take the portion that has that little um, peak at the top of it. We're going to line that up right sides facing with our hood and we're going to pin in place. So now we're going to go ahead and stitch across there. I'm going to do the other side the exact same way. Now that we have the facing sewn on to the lower edge of the hood, we're gonna grab our iron and we're gonna press up 5 8 of an inch all the way around the lower edge of the hood. And once we have that pressed up, we'll then trim it down to 3 8 of an inch. So first, let's go ahead and grab our iron and press up 5 8 of an inch along the lower edge of the hood. Okay, so now that we have the hood facing and the front facing sewn on and we've trimmed the neck seam down to 3 8 of an inch, now we can go ahead and pin that onto our jacket. Now the instruction says to put it wrong size together. You can look over at step 21 and it says with the wrong size together, pin front face into front edge. But I'm thinking it means with right size together. So that's what I'm gonna do with the right size together. I'm gonna pin over the zipper lining everything up right here i'm gonna line up my neck seam here and and pin all the way down the front facing right here 
I'm going to start at the bottom. And continue pinning all the way around your hood. Match up these seams here on your hood at the top. You want to make sure that everything is nice and even. Continue pinning down the other side of the facing. Okay, once you have the facing pinned along the jacket as well as the hood, stitch all the way around at a 5 8 of an inch seam allowance. On the lower edge, however, when we stitch across here, we're just going to stitch right along the facing, not all the way down the uh, jacket. Just right here along the facing, you want to stitch at an inch and a quarter. So an inch and a quarter down here at the bottom, and then along the front edge, all the way around the hood or the collar, if you're doing view C and D, stitch at a 5 8 of an inch seam allowance. So let's go ahead and do that now. I do want to show you all this. When I sewed up my, straight up the front facing, this part of the zipper was showing on the right side and I don't, I didn't want that. Um, so I'm just gonna pull, I took that seam out right here at the top. So I'm gonna pull this part of the zipper tape, tape out so that when I get up here to the stop, that would be the only thing there. So let me see how that is going to look. Okay, now let me see what this looks like. Okay, this looks much better. So now on the inside, you can kind of see that the zipper tapers out. You can kind of see the zipper tapers out. Before, it was just going all the way straight up and there's like no zipper there. So I didn't want that part. So it stops here. And so now I'm gonna go ahead and sew this portion of the facing at a 5 8 of an inch seam allowance. And if I need to come down a little bit further because that zipper stop is down here, it's not all the way up here. If I need to come down further, I will. But I'm gonna go ahead and just stitch it across right now at a 5 8 and then I'll see what that looks like once I'm done. So just continue stitching your zipper all the way around the facing. So I just want to show you, I did sew that portion of the zipper outside of the seam, so it looks like that. I would trim all of this down because this is SS, but once I flip it right side out though, I just want to show you the difference because I did, I did the other side already. So let me zip this back up. So this right here is at the top of the neckline and you can see this side is a little bit higher. So this is what it looked like before I took this down a little bit. I didn't want this gap right here at the top of the zipper with nothing there. So I trimmed down this one a little bit and I'm going to show you how I did it. It's really simple. I'm just going to unzip it here. So instead of doing a 5 8 of an inch right here along the hood portion I'm gonna come down just a little bit closer to that stop and then I'm just gonna bring that line up so that it comes back into this stitch right here the facing stitch for the hood so I'm just gonna instead of having the stitch here I'm gonna bring it down a little bit so it's right here above the zipper stop and it'll match the other side and I think it'll look a lot better so I just want to show you what I was doing I'm gonna put my hand here so I can And you can see that I moved it from there to here and I just gradually moved it back over here. So that is what my hood will be looking like. So now when I zip it, let me close this up. Now everything stops right here at the top. So I just wanted to show you how I fixed that. Now I can go ahead and trim off the excess of the facing now. Okay, so I have the facing all sewn on, so now I'm going to go ahead and trim down here at the bottom. And to do that, I'm just going to trim the facing off the top. Then I'm going to come up here and trim the rest off the bottom. So you can see I kept some of the hem over here, but I trimmed off the rest. 
I'm also gonna trim a little bit into that corner. Same thing for the other side. Just gonna come in a little bit. Come up the top of it. So you can see I still have a little bit of the hem over here and I just trimmed off most of that face and I'm also going to trim off the corner of it. I'm going to trim off the top corner up here as well and then just trim all the way along this hood seam. Alright, so now that we have everything pressed down and everything looks nice and neat, I'm super, super excited about the way it's coming together. Um, it's taken a little bit of time, you know, to get there. We still haven't even sewn the side seams. But when you look at that, it's looking so good. I'm so, so, so proud of this. So I'm gonna go ahead and unzip this and we're gonna move on to the next step, which is to slip stitch our facing of the hood down. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. I'm gonna grab my pins so I can pin all of my seams in place. I want everything to match up. And I'm just going to take my time and slip stitch this all the way around. So I have my needle and thread right here. I'm going to go ahead and slip stitch this off camera and then I'll come back on once I have it all complete. Okay y'all, so we are nearing the home stretch. I have my facing, I hand sewed it down in place so you can see that right there. And then I also basted the front facing down close to the inner edge. It says to hand baste it close to the inner edge and make sure that you stop four inches from the bottom. Um, I machine basted mine, but I did stop four inches from the bottom on both sides down here. You can see that this is still open, but up here, this is basted down close to the inner edge. Um, and I just use my machine to do that. So go ahead and baste your facing down as well. And now we can move on to the sleeves. So now that we have the facing basted down, the next step is to do top stitching along the edge of the hood. So at one fourth of an inch away from the edge, we're going to top stitch just right along the hood. So let's go ahead and do that now. All right, now the top stitching is done. Let's go ahead and grab our sleeves. And what we're gonna do is lay it this way. This is my back, because I have two notches. This is the front. We find which sleeve matches that. So here's my front notch, here's the two back. And I'm just going to line them up like so. I have a notch right here for my shoulder. So I'm just gonna start there and pin. I'm gonna come over here and match up the notches for the back all the way to the end. And now I'm just gonna pin the rest of the sleeve in. Now that I have it pinned, I'm gonna go ahead and stitch in a 5 8 of an inch seam allowance. And then it says to also stitch again at 1 8 of a seam allowance. So go ahead and do that now. <laughs> Okay, so I just stitched it at a 5 8 of an inch seam allowance. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put my seam allowance back up under here and I'm sewing in the seam allowance and not anymore, not outside of the 5 8 of an inch. And I'm just gonna line up with 1 8. So right here, you can see the two rows of double stitching that I just did. So now I'm gonna trim this down just a little bit and then finish off the seam with my bias tape, just like I did for the shoulder seam. And then I'm gonna do this again for the other sleeve. Okay, so I am all done sewing the bias tape onto my sleeve. I wish I would've trimmed that seam down just a little bit so both rows of the stitching isn't showing, but um, I'm okay with it. It looks good, it looks nice and clean. So now we can go ahead and put right sides together and go ahead and stitch down our side seam. So first I'm gonna match up the underarm seam, pin there, and then pin down the remainder side seam and the undersleeve of the jacket. Okay. 
Okay, go ahead and pin the other side the same way and then we're gonna sew it down at a 5 8 of an inch seam allowance. Okay, so I have my side seams finished and I did finish it with the bias tape as well. I wanted to do the seam allowances individually like I did up here for the shoulder seam, but I trimmed my seam allowance down just a little bit too short and I just figured let's just go ahead and sandwich them together instead of trying to, you know, sew bias tape to both of those tiny seam allowances. So I have my shoulder finished, side seam all finished. The next step is for us to finish off the hem of the sleeve. So let's go ahead and grab our ironing board, depending on which view you are doing. Um, if you're going to be doing view A and B, you can start at step 26, which is what I'm going to be doing. If you're going to be doing the sleeve casing, then go ahead to step 27 and start working on that now. Okay, so I have my ironing board. Here's my sleeve right here. The hem allowance is an inch and three fourth. So I'm going to go ahead and press up the hem allowance. And then once we have the hem allowance pressed up, we'll fold in a quarter of an inch on the raw edge. Okay, so I have the hem pressed up. Now I can fold in a quarter of an inch on the raw edge. And then I'll press that down the same way. Okay, so we go ahead and press up the other sleeve the exact same way and then we'll stitch close to the inner edge. So let's go ahead and do that now. Okay, so I have my sleeves hemmed. I will say when you're sewing yours, make sure that you have your top thread on the top, the right side of the fabric and the bobbin on the inside. I think it just looks a little bit better. Um, and then, you know, when you tie off your thread in the back, you sometimes you get a little knot from your bobbin. You want all that to be on the inside of the garment. So looking at it right now, my inside looks amazing. My outside looks okay. <laughs> Once you have it all sewn, now we can go ahead and give it a good press. I've already pressed it out, so go ahead and press yours, cut off any loose threads if you have them, and now we can move on to the next step. The next step is for us to go ahead and get our casing pieces, so you should have a casing front, which is piece 6, and your casing back, which is piece 7. I'm going to go ahead and grab these, and I'm going to line up my notches on them, pin in place. Take it to the sewing machine and stitch down both sides of the casing. Once you have it sewn, the casing sewn, go ahead and press the seam allowances open flat. Now on the long ends of the casing, we're going to fold under a quarter of an inch on both ends. And on the short ends, we're going to fold back 5 8 of an inch. So go ahead and get your seam gauge. And I'm just going to fold over a quarter of an inch on both of the long sides. Okay, so once you have your casing pressed, it should look like this. Make sure that you press under the 5 8 of an inch on the lower edge. If you're not quite sure where your casing line is, go ahead and grab that pattern piece and remark it. Okay, I know it's going to be hard to see. I'm sorry, but I do have my casing pinned on. You can see here. So I have it pinned and we're going to stitch along the long edges of the casing. You don't want to close this part. We have to put our drawstring through there. So make sure that you have your, your casing line marked. And I was, I'm going to sew the bottom casing line first so that it stays on the casing line. Um, and then I will switch over and sew the top. So let's go ahead and sew our casing in place now. And make sure that you match up those side seams to the side seam of your jacket. So let's do that now. All right, so I have my casing sewn on and I was just pressing everything down nice and flat. So once you have your casing sewn, the next step is to do the hem. And the hem allowance is an inch and three four. So we're going to go ahead and measure that out. Press up our hem. Once you have the hem pressed up, then we're going to fold in a quarter of an inch and we're going to sew that down same way we did for the sleeves.
Okay, so now that you have the hem pressed, we can go ahead and stitch close to the inner pressed edge. And then you want to also go ahead and close up this part portion right here with the basting stitch. And then on the right side, you want to stop top stitch it down close to the inner edge right beside that basting stitch. So let's go ahead and do that now. See if you can feel where your pressed edge is for your hem and use that as a guide. Line up the outer edge with one of the lines on your plate and then that way you'll be able to stitch it straight across with no problems. Okay, so this is how the inside of my hem looks. And I just use that pressed, ed that pressed edge as a guide to see how close I can get to it. So go ahead and do your hem and now we can go ahead and finish off the front as well. Okay, so I have all of the top stitching done. So the, the, the top stitching that's a quarter of an inch away from the zipper starts all the way at the top up here by the hood. And then that goes all the way down. And then you have the top stitching for the facing that starts right here at the neck. And that goes all the way down. So here's the inside. I have my face and sewn. So all of the facing is done. Now we can move on to the placket. If you're going to be doing um, A and D, you will need this piece. I was only supposed to cut one, but I cut two. <laughs> and I'm gonna go ahead and fuse this one with interfacing now. Okay, once you have the interfacing applied, you wanna go ahead and fold it right sides facing. And I'm just gonna put a pin here at the bottom and a pin here at the top. We're gonna take it to the machine and we're gonna stitch across the short edges. So stitch across at 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance and 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. Let's go ahead and do that now. Do not stitch this long edge, keep this open. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and trim the placket. First I'm gonna press it and then we can baste this long edge closed. Okay, now go to the machine and baste the long edge closed. Okay, so here's my placket and this is the right side of my jacket. So I have this laying up at the top. And so what you want to do is match your notches. You should have some notches at the top of the placket and on the top of your jacket. Match those up and also match up your placket line. Go ahead and pin that in place. Okay, so now we're gonna stitch right along our basting line that we put on our placket. Let's go ahead and stitch down that right now. Then we'll trim it down and then push our placket toward the right and then top stitch that down. Okay, so now that the placket is sewn, we're gonna go ahead and trim this down to a quarter of an inch. Make sure that you do not cut your jacket. Okay, now that we have that trim, you wanna go ahead and press your placket over and then we're gonna to top stitch this down. Okay, so I have my placket on. I just love the way this came together. Y'all, I am obsessed. So the last thing for us to do is to attach our snaps. Do it the same exact way that we did for the flap and then insert your drawstring and we are all done with our new jacket. Thank you all so much for tuning in for this tutorial. I really do hope that you all enjoyed it. If you have any questions, please leave them down for me below. I'll be more than happy to answer. Be sure to like, comment, and don't forget to subscribe. I am uploading every Monday and Friday, lots of sewing content coming to you all. So make sure that you subscribe and turn on your notifications so you won't miss any new videos. All right, y'all, I'll see you in the next video. Blessings, everyone. Bye.